Hello buddy, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor and today we're going to be doing a, an in-depth guide for Fiddlestick support. So special thanks to Juan for the very generous donation. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can find timestamps in the description. You can also find a link to this Google Doc in the description as well um, if you want to skip around. So we're going to first off just go over some of Fiddlestick's abilities, talk about how he fits into the meta, you know, where you might want to pick him, where you might want to avoid him, overall strengths, weaknesses, and sort of best... Um, best champions to pair him with then we'll talk about the runes a little bit here and we'll talk about the items and then i'm going to go through uh sort of the end at the end and just kind of talk about how he should be positioning during the laning phase during team fights and some really good spots uh and good warding tactics to ensure that you get very high quality ults because a lot of fiddlesticks is all about vision control and getting high quality ults so I do have uh, multiple videos on the main channel. Be sure to check it out, The Strategy Professor, um, on YouTube. And I show you all kinds of really good um, ward positions and how to control vision and all of that kind of stuff. Not specifically in terms of fiddlesticks, but just overall as a general rule of thumb. So if you want to work on your vision control, be sure to check that out. Okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and get in here. So let's look at fiddlesticks himself in terms of his overall stats. So... Fiddlesticks is kind of in a unique position as an AP champion because um, he has really, really nice CC that's a point-click ability. So this is really what defines Fiddlesticks is this Terrify, where you can just point-click, cue somebody, and uh, you know CC him for up to 2.25 seconds. That's a really, really long time this day and age for crowd control. You know, a lot of crowd control has been nerfed to where it's only like you know maybe one and a half, maybe two seconds. Fiddle goes all the way to 2.25. But you have to keep in mind that um, this does zero damage. Like, absolutely none. And a lot of other abilities, like Morgana, who also, um, you know, has a three-second bind, actually does damage. But this is also a point-click, so you don't have to actually land anything. Um, so that's really nice. My wife just uh, texted me. She's been... I, I got her watching... Uh, Westworld, which everybody out there should watch Westworld too. It's great. So I just watched the first season last week and I just got her to watch it. And I think she got to one of these like really crazy, awesome episodes. But um, anyways, uh, so that that's really what differentiates him is he has this awesome point click uh, crowd control. Now it's very short range as well. It's 575 range, so it's really dangerous. This makes him very susceptible to long range champions or long range engage because he can't get close enough to CC. But he's very good against assassins and sort of melee bruiser champions. So he's pretty good against things like um, you know Graves, Jax, Irelia, um, just things that want to get in close to do their damage, right? So that's really the best place when you want to pick Fiddlesticks is if they have like high damage bruisers where you can get good visibility on them. So, you know, if they have something like a Rengar or uh, an Evelyn or something like that, that could be a problem because they might be able to kill you before you can even um, Q them. But, you know, things where you have a lot of visibility, things that aren't going to blow you up instantly, you know, like Irelia, Jax, uh, then that's where he's going to be best. Very good against um, like melee supports also. So yeah, that's kind of one of the defining features of Fiddlesticks. Uh, he has very low auto attack range too. Like He's technically ranged, but he only has 480 range. Uh, his health's pretty low, only 524 health. You know, his armor's only 30. So he's squishy. I mean, he looks squishy. He is squishy. He does have 335 move speed, which is pretty decent. And then he has kind of a suite of other abilities that have a surprisingly very high amount of base damage, but they're all damage over time. So his drain does up to 900 damage if you max it out and hold it on someone for the full duration, so that's a ton. You don't usually max this first. You usually um, get three points of Dark Wind and Lane, and then you um, max your fear. What happened at the end of that episode? That was the big, What's up, Roy? The big reveal. Okay. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. they're they're they're. Mi oh my gosh! <laughs> they they went down to the basement. Oh, I see. That is a big one. There are others. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> That's the first. Good job, Rory. I think she's. She's poopy. Yeah, That's why she's I brought her up here. Poopy. She poopy. She poopy. She's 
holding on to my thing. Anyways, um, sorry, sometimes we have a little family intermission here. But anyways, he has really high base damages, uh, pretty low cooldown on his drain. It is kind of mana intensive, but really nice. Gives him a little bit of healing in lane too. If he takes a bad trade, if you like drain up on a uh, cannon minion or something like that, then you can heal back a decent amount. This is also very short range though, so it's only 575 range. And then Dark Wind is uh, really sort of his defining trait during the laning phase. Because you can just throw this on the minion wave. And it'll bounce. It does a ton of damage to minions. And there's a high probability it'll bounce and hit the enemy too. It's almost impossible to avoid. Especially now on this patch. Um, now that they've nerfed Fleet Footwork. This is patch 8.11 when I'm making this guide. Now that they've nerfed Fleet Footwork. Uh, people aren't going to have as much sustain. Unless they want to buy something like... A vampiric scepter in lane which some people might do that you know you might see something like maybe lucian will rush blade the ruin king i think he'll probably rush essence reaver um twitch might rush blade the ruin king so there's a couple of champions that might get that vamp scepter but for the most part i think a lot of people are still gonna shortcut on that now if they take something like um doran shield or um and if they have a healing support, you know, Nami and Soraka are very, um, very popular right now, then they might be able to get around this. But, you know, in the worst case scenario, you're still going to push them in. You're going to get um, some really nice lane pressure off of this. And it's very cheap and very spammable. So that's nice. Usually you'll get, you know, two to three points of this in lane, depending on how much harass you're getting to do. You know, if they have a Soraka and the harass just really doesn't matter, then you might want to just go ahead and start maxing out your Terrify. Just get one point in Dark Wind and then just you know, max out Terrify from there. If you're doing some pretty good poke harass, um, then you could go ahead and get three points in Dark Wind and then start maxing Terrify. But you want to make sure that Terrify, um, you're leveling it up pretty steadily because, you know, there's a huge difference between 1.25 second stun, fear, and a 2.25 second. And it also lowers the cooldown, so you can do it much more in a fight. So that, remember, this is really, like, the main attraction when you play Fiddle Six is the Terrify. So... Dark Wind's good for lane, but you want to make sure that you transition over to this pretty quickly. Um, now, one thing also to note with Dark Wind, you don't want to, whenever possible, you want to try not to take CS from your AD carry or to make it difficult for them to CS. So, you know, you really only want to cast this maybe once per wave, depending on how many points you get in it. You just, you don't want to, just for the sake of a little bit of extra harassment, you don't want to make your AD carry miss like 3 CS because the crow just bounces around and, and throws them off. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So a really good time to throw this is when like the wave is coming in in a line. You can just throw it and usually it just bounces right up the line. Um, as far as runes go, you know, you can take Comet if you want to do a bit more damage later, but I think that Aerie is also really nice because it guarantees you're going to hit that every time you get them with the crow, whereas they can dodge Comet. So I'm kind of inclined to want to take Aerie on him. Uh, but either either one's probably fine. And then finally, his other like most well-known ability is Crow Storm. This one's obviously the most uh, conspicuous ability. You know, he pops out, does a ton of damage. Even with, you know, no items at level 11, he would do 1,100 damage to everybody with a 225% AP ratio. So that's pretty nutty. So obviously, you know, a big part of Fiddlesticks, especially in the mid-game, is finding windows to where you can use this Crow Storm correctly uh, and make some really solid plays. Now, they did just add a new rune, Nimbus Cloak, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, which is going to be awesome on Fiddlesticks. It'll let you uh, get that 100 move speed, like, right when you're um, finished channeling this. So you can really, you know, make sure that you're in a good position. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it to his abilities. There's not that much sneakiness that goes on with it. His passive just is pretty worthless. It's like one of the worst passives in the game. I mean, it's nice when you channel your ult to get that little bit of extra bonus movement speed. Um, but, you know, you won't find yourself using this that much. I mean, you might be able to, uh, you know, run up and fear somebody with that extra movement speed. Um, you know, if you want to do something like Hextech, flash traption or something as your secondary runes you know maybe this could be okay but 
you know, by and large, the passive just is not going to matter a lot in most situations. So, you know, the bottom line is you want to get usually two to three points of dark when in lane, depending on how much harassment you're actually sticking to them. If they're just healing through it, you know, you want to go ahead and transition over to terrify. But if you're sticking some pretty good damage, you can get, you know, up to three points here. Then you go for the terrify, and then in the mid game, you want to pop out from a place where they don't see you. And then um, your rotation should be, you know, pop out, terrify, um, auto attack, dark wind, and then start draining a lot of the time. Um, or you can pop out, terrify, drain for about, you know, maybe one and a half seconds, and then dark wind after that, depending on if you think they're going to have their flash or not. But you want to make sure, I mean, the most important thing is that you chain together your Terrify with the Silence off of Dark Wind so that they get that, you know, pretty close to a full, um, you know, three and a half seconds where they can't flash. That's the most important thing. So that they stay in your ult pretty much for the entire duration. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about um, sort of where he fits into the meta and sort of what's going on. So he has great poke in the lane with his crows. So he's very good against things um, that he outranges. So he's pretty good against things like Zyra, Brand, Lulu, Janna. You know, just champions that aren't going to have a heal in lane that uh, are going to be pretty vulnerable to poke. He has awesome CC. So he's very good, like I said, against melee, you know, threats, particularly ones that you can blow up. So he's very good against assassins and bruisers, as long as they don't blow him up first. So he's not as good against tanks because, yeah, you fear him, but, you know, you're not going to be able to kill him before that fear wears off a lot of times. Um, but he is excellent against assassins. If they don't get Quicksilver Sash, they're just going to die anytime they try to engage. Isn't that right, Rory? Yeah. Um... And he has really high base damages, which means that you can afford to get utility items like a. Uh, you can afford to get utility items like Zanya's Hourglass and still do tons of damage. You know, with other supports, a lot of times you have to get the big damage items. You know, you got to get Leandre's, you got to get um, like Rylai's, but with Fiddlesticks, you can afford to get a Zanya's. Um, and if you want to, you could get like a Shirelia's. Which, they just changed Shirelia's to give the mana regen. He doesn't need the mana regen that much, but, you know, if you want it, it is kind of nice in the mid game because you get that extra um, movement speed so you can run people down and fear them at least to pick them off if you're running a pit comp, even if your ult's down. But, you know, the extra 30 second cooldown on the Shirelia's, the extra 50% from what it was, is a pretty big deal. Now... It is nice if uh, if you can get an extra 10% um, CDRs from somewhere. Because a lot of times you'll have your CDR off of your gold item. You'll get Ionian boots as your secondary. Then your Zhonya's will give you 30% more. But it's really hard to get that last 10% CDR without having sort of an awkward build. Right, Rory? But you could go something in theory like either Shirelia's or Twin Shadows. If you want the 10% um, CDR. Twin Shadows kind of gives away your position, but it also makes sure that when you're trying to establish a position that you're not going to get picked off because Fiddlesticks is very susceptible to getting picked off by the enemy junglers. He doesn't have great escapes. So before you go ward and, or like sweep ward, sometimes having those ghosts is really handy. Um, but, you know, a lot of the time you're probably better off it depends on how much gold you have, honestly. Um, if you're getting really fed, you could get something like a... Um, good job, Rory. You could get something like a death cap after Zanya's. Um, I mean, you could just get a fiendish codex and just figure out later on what you want with, with it, honestly. There are a lot of things you could get with it. She's getting violent. She is getting violent. Good job, Rory. Get it. Get it. She's smacking the She's like headphone you guys cord. can probably hear it. She's like wiggling the, the headphone cord. Um, smacking it against the computer. So I don't know. The the forty percent CDR is just so phenomenal because you really, really want your ult and you really want um Jesus. Okay. 
Do you want to go back downstairs, baby? <laughs> you really want your ult, and you really oh. want um. Ooh. You really want more fears oh. in a fight too. Oh. Thanks for humoring us with the uh, with the baby. She's having fun in here. Um, you know, another build path, like, someone's asked me when I played Fiddlesticks before, what about, um, Loot and Zacho? It, that's overkill, because it gives 20% CDR, and you don't really need the mana. I think you're just paying too much for that. You know, if you're gonna go Ludens, you should just go ahead and just go Death Cap. So, most of the time, you know, you should probably just go Zhonya's in the Death Cap. You could go Void Staff is another decent option, because you have such high base damages. So, you just kind of have to feel out and see what's going on. You know, you might be able to go Morello's, uh, Namicon. I really wish they'd put, like, 10% CDR on Morello's. That'd make it much more attractive uh, for supports, but... Either way, you kind of read the situation. You can figure out which one of those items you want to go to. So we kind of skip down here to this. Um, so yeah, it, it's almost always Watcher, Ionia, Zanya's, and then um, typically I like Void Staff. It's just a lot cheaper than Death Cap and does similar damage, not quite as much in some situations, but it's still really, really good. Um, so yeah, just pretty much big damage items after you get these three is how, how you'll want to run it most of the time. Um, and then he's paired best with other people that have pretty good CC or pushing power in lane or both. So like Varus would be pretty good with him. Ash is pretty good with him. You know, whenever they land their ult, then that's pretty much automatically you get a free ult on top of them and they're going to die. So Varus and Ash are extremely good because they have so much CC. Um, Sivir's pretty decent in lane too because you can just throw your crow on the wave and then she just boomerangs down the wave and you just like permanently push him in. Um, and then whenever you try to engage later on in the game, Sivir can pop her ult and get the whole team to run in after you engage. So Sivir's a decent one. You know, Jin could be another one who could potentially be pretty good. You know, if you fear him and then Jin W's him and then you drain him while they're W'd, like that's a pretty gross combo too. But he's not really that bad with a lot of AD carries. I think other AD carries that are weak in lane, he's not going to be particularly great with. So someone like a Twitch or a, um, a like a Vayne or something like that, he's not going to be phenomenal with them. Um, but other people that have really high damage, especially that have CC, particularly level 6, um, are going to be pretty nice. So you're mostly picking him against a certain kind of comp which is melee squishy champions like that's really when he shines is when you're against you know two or three melee pretty squishy champions on the enemy team which there's a lot of team comps like that these days um and he's paired best against uh fairly squishy champions that don't have a lot of sustain so like Jana, lulu and rakan he's pretty good against rakan too i mean that fear completely shuts down rakan whenever he wants to go in with his ult so that's really good. And then, um, you know, Lulu is kind of a similar thing. If you can ever get that fear on Lulu before she polymorphs somebody in a fight, um, then she's very vulnerable to dying. And Janna's kind of the same thing. If you're able to ult on top of her, yeah, she can blow you back with her ult, but if you can manage to ult on top of her and fear her before she gets her ult off, then she is very susceptible to getting blown up. So those are kind of the best um, best pairings. And then we've got, uh, we talked about the items a little bit here. Now, like I said, you just want the CDR as fast as possible. You just go Ionia and then usually the tier 2 gold item. You can go coin also. It's just, it's really easy to proc uh, Watcher. So what, what I would say is, you know, if you think you're going to be able to stick the damage in lane, if you're, you know, against a Lulu or a Janna or something like that, and they don't have an AD carry that's going to get Vamp Scepter, then you can go for the uh, Spell Thief's line and stick a little damage. But if that harassment's not going to matter, if they have a healer, if they have a Nami, a Sona, a Soraka, or something like that in lane, um, you're just not going to apply enough extra pressure with um, your Spell Thieves you know, to, to push them out of the lane. And almost everybody's going to, almost every AD carry is going to take Doran's shield against Fiddle because they know you're just going to spam the crows on them. So that's my problem with Spell Thieves. It's like, if you really don't leverage it early to get a major advantage through the um, poke damage that you do with it, then it's not really going to be worth it because you're going to fall off later on in terms of gold. The extra movement speed off of coin is actually really relevant. A lot of people forget about that. 
but the tier 2 Nomad's Medallion gives you that 10 move speed. The Mana Regen is negligible. It's basically the same thing. You're just paying for that little bit of extra AP early um, in exchange for having much worse scaling later. So, you know, most of the time, you know, Frost Fang, Spell Thieves is probably a good idea early on because you have such high damage at level 6. Having that extra 20 AP is pretty nice. But, you know, w once again, if you're against an Amiens Rock, I don't think it's wrong to go coin either and just say, you know, we're just going to farm it out until level 6 because my harassment's not going to matter that much. Um, and then, you know, Sork Boots, there's an argument for Sork Boots, you know, if you want to get Ludens for some reason, you can go, like, Watcher, Sork Boots, Zanya, Ludens, but the thing is, you're not going to complete Ludens until really late in the game. Because um, <clears throat> I do think that you want Zanyas first. I've tried going, like, Shirelias and, you know, Twin Shadows and just trying to play it that way without getting, um... Zonyas, but being able to start the fight, especially in this meta where a lot of chan a lot of team comps aren't running champions that can engage, is really nice. So when you pop up over that wall, you can jump right into four or five people, fear somebody, and then Zonyas. That's really nice to have that sort of engage power. So um, then obviously, you know, if you've never played Fiddle Six before, which most people watching this guide, I assume you probably played Fiddle. Um, your Crow Storm, your ultimate keeps channeling. Um, even if you use the Zanyas. So that's kind of the, the combo with him. Okay. So yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it in terms of like the items and when you should get what. So most of the time, just watch your Ionian and Zanyas. Tons of control wards. You really, really have to be on top of your wards. You have to control ward all the time. And you have to make sure they do not have vision anywhere. Because if they see you, it completely ruins fiddlesticks. If they see that you're going to channel your ult, they could interrupt it, or they could just walk away. You know, so you want to make sure that you're being really sneaky, and um, you're shutting out their vision, and you're coming at them from really interesting angles that they're not going to expect. That's really what it takes to be a master fiddlesticks player, is to get those really high quality ultimates um, when they don't see it coming. Alright, so... As far as runes go, I think you should just go um, Airy, Nimbus, Celerity, Scorch. Once again, if you're against the Soraka, you might want to get off of the Scorch and get something else. You could get Water Walking so that you can rotate better. Um, if you think it's going to be a really long game, you could get um, Gathering Storm. Both of those are decent. If you don't think you're going to be able to stick a lot of harassment early. And then... Uh, Bone Plating and Chrysalis, I think, are still the standard on him. I mean, you could try to go something greedy. You know, you could go for, like, Sudden Impact Ultimate Hunter. Might be okay from the Domination Tree. If you're against, like, a very easy lane, if you're against, like, a Janna or something, and you don't think you're going to need Bone Plating and Chrysalis. The thing is, like, these things, especially Bone Plating, save you in the mid-game, too, against Assassins, to make sure you don't get... it's, Or at least it's a lot harder for them to one-shot you. But, you know, being able to get Ultimate Hunter for 15% cooldown on your ult from the Domination Tree and getting the extra 10 spell pin off of uh, Sudden Impact is pretty gross. That's really good. It might be 8 spell pin. Either way, that's really, really nice because you have high base damages. So I'll have to try it out. I haven't tried it out on this patch yet where, you know, you can get Nimbus Cloak and then also get Ultimate Hunter. I'll pull the runes up here really quickly. So I can show you. Hopefully they're updated. Yeah, they're on it. So basically they got rid of um, Ulti Hat here. If you didn't read the patch notes, I just released the patch notes today. But they got rid of that and they put in Nimbus Cloak. So basically, um, ooh, it's a 1.5 second delay. Um... I think that's fine. I mean, I, I assume when you cast it, then it starts this, not when you finish it for the Nimbus Cloak. I'd have to test it out with Fiddle and see. But if it starts, if this starts when you cast it, when you start to cast the channel, I'm pretty sure it's a one and a half second delay on your ult anyways. Yeah. So that's perfect. If it lines up like that, then you get that 100 movement speed like right when you uh, land with your ultimate. So that's, that's a match made in heaven there if it works out that way. 
So that's really good. Um, so yeah, that's that's really strong. And then Aerie, we talked about earlier. Aerie versus Comet. Aerie is just more guaranteed damage early, but Comet is more damage later. So once again, if you're against the Soraka or Anami or something like that, you might want to take Comet. But if you can stick that damage, Aerie is going to be good. Um, yeah, so Nimbus Cloak, great. Celerity, also awesome, because 8% of your bonus movement speed turns to ability power, so you get a free extra 8 ability power. Which is not insane, but it's pretty pretty cool combo with Nimbus Cloak there. And then, uh, you know, just depending on your situation, you can go Water Walking, helps you position better, helps you rotate better. Gathering Storm, you know, starts to become worth it. Around 20 minutes, at 30 minutes, it's a good, really good bargain. Um, and then Scorch is kind of going to be your standard most of the time, if you're able to land uh, some meaningful harass. And then as I mentioned before, I think that uh, Bone Plating and Chrysalis, this is just the safest option in the lane. Gives you a lot of extra survivability transitions into pretty good um, ability power payout off of Chrysalis. So, you know, there's a reason almost everybody takes these two runes. They're very, very good still. But another interesting option now is you could go for um, Sudden Impact plus Ulti Hunter. So this would give you an extra 8 spell pen. Um, which, very loosely, this isn't like 100% mathematically correct, but that's the equivalent of doing somewhere around like 8% extra damage to people because you're cutting 8 of their magic resist, so you're going to kill them 8% faster if you're removing 8% of their magic resist. So that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, obviously, that's only going to work whenever you use your ult. Unless you, you know, you can't run um, Hex hex and this, though. That's not going to work, but that would be an interesting combo. But if you got something, you know, Proto Belt, I'm not a huge fan of Proto Belt, but I've never tried it on Fiddlesticks. You know, you could try to get Proto Belt after you get... Um, after you get Zhonya's, potentially, that would give you the 40% CDR, your Proto Belt, after you ult. So if you just ult on top of somebody, Fear, you can Proto Belt right in their face. Um, do a ton of extra damage, and it would trigger this. Uh, but then again, you're going to trigger this anyways off of your ult, so that's not going to matter. I guess the only case where Proto Belt would matter would be if you just like Proto Belt out of a bush or something, Fear somebody and drain them. So yeah, it's probably just too cute. So you'd only use this on your ult, but... That's when you're going to do most of your damage anyway, so it might be worth it. And then Ulti Hunter can give you that 10% extra cooldown on your ult, which is really good. I mean, you are very, very ult dependent. If your ult is down, you're really not worth a lot as Fiddlesticks. So this is definitely something to consider, especially if you're against an easier lane. Um, you could go for that combination of Sudden Impact plus Ulti Hunter. Although I think the default is probably still Bone Plating and Chrysalis. You know, another option could be something like Cosmic Insight plus Magical Footwear. This gives you a bit more um, gold value. Although this takes a little while to come online. And that's only 5% cooldown reduction. But, I mean, it is on Summoner spells and Item Actives. I mean, you are going to be using your Zhonya's as well, so... I don't know. It's This is still a pretty decent build if you go for these two, but in order of sort of what I would get, I'd probably go Bone Plating Chrysalis, and then maybe situationally Sudden Impact and Ulti Hunter, and then if you're feeling really greedy, you could go Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. In terms of runes. Okay, so for the last, uh, I don't know, seven minutes or so, I'm trying to do these guides a little bit faster um, also just so that, you know, they aren't as intimidating for new reviewers. Eventually, you know, in the future, I might do some video editing and add in some footage as well. Um, I'm just, I'm still working on how to balance that, how to balance, you know, putting in a lot of great information, plus also having video editing and making shorter videos. Okay, so, you know, we don't need to talk a lot about, we're just using Rift Kit here just to show you some different positions and different places to be. Um... You know, we don't have to... Uh, the landing phase is very straightforward. You just spam E on the wave most of the time. You'll push them in. But then it's like, what do you do after you push them in? So the real fun starts when you're six, okay? So a good way to do this is you really want to leverage these bushes here. If you're on... Especially if you're on red side. Um, you know, if you're able to push them in. What you can do is... I call this the fake out. So if you keep a control ward somewhere over here... So, like, one way you can do this is put a control ward here. Alright. 
Um, so push them in like this and then deliberately look like you're walking up here when the minion wave is in line. So start walking up here and then as soon as you're out of sight, turn back around, loop over here if you have a control word there and then get to like right here. And then as soon as they come out from this tower, they're probably going to think that you're not there yet, that you went off to roam or that you're warding or just doing something random. And so they might actually like come really close and try to engage on your AD carry. Then you could pop out with your ult and potentially kill some people there. So that's called the old uh, ward fake out where you act like you're going to go ward and then you loop around and go this way. Okay. You got to do stuff like that as Phil's Dix. You really got to think outside the box a little bit and play these mind games with them so they don't know where you are. Okay, another more common tactic or like interesting tactic you can do is the pink ward bait. That's what I call it. So you push them in like this, you drop a pink ward, you clear the vision here. Um, so if you try to do this, it, so let's say you're trying the tactic number one that I just talked about where, you know, you're going to drop a pink ward here and you were planning on doing this. But let's say they have a ward here. So as soon as you put a pink ward here, and clear this out, they're gonna suspect that you might be in that bush, right? So what you can do instead, after you push them in, is you come over here, you make sure that this is swept, that this is cleared, you come over here, you leave your pink ward in that bush, and then you wait right here. And then they're gonna push up like this, and then I'll guarantee you, like 99% of the time in most ELOs, that support's gonna come over here and try to clear this pink ward. Right? They always do it. That's the, that is the easiest way to kill a support is to put a pink ward in a known area and let them try to clear it and then you jump on them when they're going for it. Okay, so you can do it like this and then you jump on them, collapse, kill them. Okay? So that's another way you can do it. Um, so those are probably like the easiest, like best sort of lane tactics is you can use those lane bushes and just have a bunch of control wards shut out vision and just play little mind games with them you know if they if you think they're going to expect you to be in this bush then be in the other bush and just wait on them to come in here and clear that pink word out you know other common tactics would be if you're on top side here brown side in this illustration if you're on brown side you know it's very common to fight over wards i don't know what is wrong with all this clicking here okay very common to fight over wards in this bush. So when you're on brown side... Now this is what you would do if you're getting pushed in. So if they have a stronger lane than you, you can try this. This is a little bit more dangerous, but let's say that you have your pink ward here. You know, you can zip up over here. Then the support tries to come over here and clear this. Then you can pop on them, you know, over this wall. Potentially kill them. Now, ideally, you don't want to be all the way pushed in because if your AD carry is here and this, you know, their AD carry is right here, then they can come and support. So that one's a little more dangerous, but that is an option you can do too. And then one of the more common ones, you know, if people aren't like watching out for this is, you know, the most common thing you can do is you just have your control ward here. And make sure if you ever ward this area right here this bush you need to put the control ward down as far as you possibly can right here and the reason is that will give you vision of this entire wall which is really important because a lot of people will try to ward here for fiddlesticks right so if you put your control ward like here in the middle of this bush then it's not going to see all of this so it's only going to see to like right here and i know that and i think a lot of you know platinum supports will try to play around that Platinum and higher will try to play around that and they will place their ward like right here to try to see this ridge Right so that it, if you put your ward in the middle of the bush, it's not going to see that but if you did put it like here Then it would see it and you would be able to clear it out. So make sure that you have this pinked And then you know obviously if they are Foolish enough to keep pushing up and harassing like near the tower which sometimes they are then you can just ult over the wall and your AD carry can engage, and you get some kills that way. So that's a pretty pretty simple one also. Um, then, of course, just anything that's around this bush, you can do it from either side. If people are just fighting over vision, 
you know, you can ult over this wall and get them, or if you're here, you can ult over this wall and get them. So, just any time you're fighting over vision here, it's a pretty good place. Okay, so that's kind of like your main places for the laning phase. So, uh, you probably knew about this one and like this one, but try to use those lane bushes too. Try to use the fake out and the pink bait um, down there to get them. So, one of the best places in the mid game to get control of is this bottom side river. So, you want to make sure to sweep and clean all this out. But this is the best place because you can control dragon spawn and you can rotate between mid lane and bot lane uh, pretty easily and just get full dominion of this river, which is really nice for you so that you can rotate, especially if you get this first tower, so that you can push them in down here and then rotate up here and help middle lane. Don't rotate top lane. I know I have this debate almost every stream with people, and I'm not going to get into it right now, but you do not want to be rotating top lane, especially with fiddlesticks. You want to have that vision control. You want to make sure you're locking them out. Okay? So, you know, ideally, you would want to put your wards like here, here, and here. You know, in a perfect world, you could get your three wards there, assuming that you've taken the first tower bottom. Um... Let me get rid of that one. Put that one there, and then um, you put your pink ward here. Make sure this is cleaned out. And then, um, you know, obviously if anyone comes walking through there, the easiest thing is you just ult them, you know, over this wall. That's one of the best ways to do it. Now, another way that you can kind of take this up a notch is if you know this is clear, if you swept it, or whatever you can get real cheeky and put your pink ward here this is what I call the oops pink ward you can do it a lot just put a pink ward in just a random place on the ground um, and people will try to go clear it they'll think you just misclicked or something so if you just put a pink ward here people just see a ward and they just want to go up and clear it you know another tricky thing you can do is I call it the oops pink ward because you can just put it like right outside of a bush too sometimes you know you can just drop it like here or something just say oops i missed the bush you know that's why i call it the oops pink ward and then people be like oh look at that idiot he didn't even ward the bush and then they'll walk over there and then you can jump on him a lot of times you know or you can even just put your pink ward a little bit more out in the open if you want to just put your pink ward somewhere in vision where they can see it and bait them to come up to try to clear it out. That's one of the easiest things you can do as fiddlesticks. But yeah, just try to get dominion over this area. Just set up your wards like this. Um, if you're on the other side of the map, if you're on green side, or on a blue side rather, you want to put your ward here. Just basically, you always want it to be like over a wall, and then you want to be jumping over walls a lot of times to get to people. That's like the ideal situation. So you want to put one like there, put one there. You've got a bit more discretion with this one. Um, usually I'll try to put it up somewhere over there, but... You know, you could also put it over here if you want to. But yeah, here's a pretty standard spot. So now you have really good vision of this area, and then same thing, you can jump over this wall if you want to, or if you see somebody rotating down river, you can hang out here and then catch them out like that. Uh, I mean, you can do it on top side, too. So if you've already killed them from this side, you know, once or twice, and you can rotate over to uh, top side and just switch it up a little bit. So you could put your pink ward here. And then it's pretty much the same deal. You just hang out here, and then you would adjust your wards to put them, like, here here and here now this is also um, where you kind of want to be for Baron baiting so if you're trying to if you're on uh, top side and you're trying to bait for Baron you can put wards up like this and then like the best place you can hide a lot of times like you can hide here sometimes people will expect that but you know kind of the super secret spot where a lot of people won't expect is here so if you have this warded, a lot of people, you know, will throw something in here. They'll throw an arrow or just whatever their spell is to check this. 
and then they'll think they're in the clear and then they just walk up like this and then you can just ult right over that and kill them on this wall also this wall is a good position because then if they come um you can get them any way they approach so if they think they're going to be cute and like sneak up this way you can pop over the wall and kill them or if they go this way you can pop over the wall and kill them so it's just very versatile where you hide right on this edge um use either a sweeper or a pink ward if you're not sure about the uh, baron make sure that that's clean and then put it up here after that and that way you can destroy any wards that might be along this edge here but yeah so you just want to shut out vision here fiddle's very good at baiting baron because he can ult obviously does a ton of damage to crowds um but yeah i mean that's that's pretty much what you want to do is fiddle you just want to be you know faking people out so if your team is pushing up a little bit, let's say their tier one is down and you just pushed up over to here, um, you know, then you could just do the same thing. Act like you're walking off going this way and then just like loop back around and go that way or just act like you're going straight back and then just loop around this way. Just always like think, okay, they saw me go this way and then go the other way. Like just try to go out of their vision like a completely different way from where you're going to come at them and then obviously you know really good spots as well where you could go like some of the best engaged spots are obviously like here you know right there here here it's pretty much anywhere there's a wall <laughs> a lot of the time as fiddlesticks you just want to make sure that you're always sweeping and cleaning it you know, another cheeky spot is here, if you can get him. So, just kind of anywhere that has a wall, you can get him. So, just be, uh, you know, you want to be deliberate and just think about, okay, where do they want to go, right? Are they going to try to come and contest this Baron? Forcing them to check Baron is the easiest one, because you know they're going to go there to look for it. If you know they're about to come to Dragon, you know, you can get them there. If you know, okay... They're probably going to try to go for our tier 2 top, so I'm going to ward up our jungle, make sure we're good to go, and then um, I'll catch them over a wall in the jungle. So just think about where are they likely to go next, and then see if you can get there first, clear out all the vision, and then set up his fiddlesticks, and try to get those really good ults. And just be aware that they're going to be expecting you a lot of times to ult his fiddlesticks. So you got to play those mind games with them. You know, look like you're going one direction, fake out, go the other direction, drop a pink ward outside of a bush to try to bait him to go clear it. Um, you know, you got you got to use some of these sneaky tactics. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind also, you don't always have to be um, out of sight to ult. Now, obviously, that's best. But sometimes if you're just like sieging a tower and that ash lands an ash arrow on somebody, you can just ult them right there on the spot because what are they going to do about it? <laughs> They're stunned. So, you know, if someone, if you have a tank on your team that's just engaging a fight, even if you don't have the perfect position, you can still just jump in there um, with your ult as fiddlesticks a lot of the time. So, okay, uh, that's going to be it. Hopefully, um, this is a pretty thorough guide for you. So we went pretty in-depth with the items um the abilities the runes and then i tried to give you some really good tips for the last 15 minutes of the video or so about where you can ult with fiddlesticks to have sort of maximum impact but um yeah that's gonna be it uh if you're out there watching and you like a guide yourself just email me at the strategy professor gmail.com more than happy to set that up for you just 30 dollars for a guide um 30 dollar donation or if you're a member of the channel it's a 25 dollar donation if you would like to become a member there's a link in the description for that I also just started up a YouTube sponsorship uh, thing last week. So come on out to the stream sometime. Check it out. Uh, we start around 9.30 to 10 o'clock p.m. most nights. And um, if you really like the channel, if you really want to support it, it's just $5 a month also if you want to, you know, sponsor through the stream. If you sponsor through the stream, you get, like, these special chat emojis and, like, chat text and things like that. Then you can come play with us every Tuesday if you want for some normal games. It's a lot of fun with other members. Um, and you can join our awesome Discord community. If you become a member through the PayPal system, which is the old system that I have that's going to be linked in the description, you also get the Discord. You get to come out and play with us on Tuesdays. I can't give you the chat on YouTube because it's not run through YouTube. But in exchange, I give you the $5 discount on the guide. So it would only be $25 for a guide or like $15 for a coaching session. So, um... 
yeah, be sure to check out that stuff if you're interested. Uh, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe so that uh, you can catch all the new stuff. It also helps other people find the channel to enjoy the same content that I hope you're enjoying. And yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you very much. Have a good day. Hopefully you enjoy this guide and uh, go out there and get a lot of free LP with fiddlesticks. All right, see you later.